Everybody and welcome back once again to Goonies World. I am Meanie, also known as Ryan, and joining me tonight are Goonie. Of course, Goonie wouldn't be Goonies World without Goonie, also known as Colin. Hello. Lunicorn, also known as Lynn. Hey, hey, hey. And Johnny Farrow, also known as Sean. Hey, hey, hey. And we are heading back to West Wells, as I understand, to... Uh, Find a churning staff. Very special churning staff. Yeah. That's right. And you you think maybe there's it might do a little bit more than just churning butter, but uh, that remains to be seen. Um, but yeah, we we left off last episode uh, with you guys. I think we just arrived in the um, uh, Cebola Sunrise Apartments. And um, you guys had stolen the uh, the van of the uh, Chud brothers that you guys uh, tussled with outside of the Shell station. And on the side of the van, it says Chud and Sons Funeral Home, which you passed by on the way here. Um, Some unsavory business happening at that funeral home, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, also, don't want to let you forget about um, Moroni. Moroni, is that how you say your name? Moroni. Yeah. yeah Moroni. Um, you had the condition of drunk. So you, you. Oh well, yes. I mean, he had chugged. He had picked up a case of Budweiser from that convenience store we were in at the Chud Brothers, and I think he. It chugged at least one, which is probably sufficient for him because he had never touched this stuff before. So. Yeah, didn't he do some cocaine or something too? No. Well, he was he was going to get some PCP, but he didn't yeah. know what it was. PCP, yeah. that's right. <laughs> yeah. And just so <laughs> listeners know, it's been like several weeks since we've played, so we're all trying to remember everything. But yeah, yeah. Um, I do remember. But well, in case I haven't said it, you know, this system does not uh, have any hit points. So you just have, like, conditions and stuff, which might give you a disadvantage or a, an advantage, depending on the situation. But so I just gave you the condition of being drunk, uh, which might uh, impair you for some roles, but it's not going to last too long. So, uh,. Yeah, you've just pulled up in your gray van, and uh, it's night out, and you can uh, look. You're looking for unit number seven. Should be fairly easy to find. Yes, we've got to find this Ira. Ira Troyer, I believe his name was, brother and sister. Hopefully he'll... Of course, he used to be one of us, so... Yeah, so hopefully he'll. We can reach his heart. He'll look into his heart and do the right thing. Yeah, j- supposedly he was uh, kicked out of uh, Musterton for his sinful behavior, and he uh, stole the churning staff when he left. But uh, yeah, you find Unit Seven. It's on the ground floor. You can go right up to the door, and you can. Knock if you want. Hey, I just, uh, Yeshua, brother, brother, man, brother, <laughs> I just wanted to tell you, like, man, like, I love you, man. Like, oh I don't know. And Sister Cecily, like, um, yeah, I love you too. And I think you guys, like, would be great together. Like, oh my. 
Yeah. Hey, were we? Where are we? What are we doing? Well, first you'll, you're, you're <laughs> going to embarrass me, and and God's love go with you, bro. And yes, Cecily is like blushing hugely at this point. Yes, but uh, brother, brother, we're we're here at the Sabola Sunrise Apartments. Remember, we're going to get that churning stick that uh, that that Xerxeal, the angel, has commanded us to to get. If I'm recalling that correctly, it's been a a wild twenty minutes of game time and you know <laughs> three weeks of real time. But I do believe I heard the command of the archangel Xerxeal himself, and. <laughs> Yo, I, 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 I think I made Sister Cecily. Her face turned as red as your beard, man. I, oh. I think I fucked up, man. Oh, language, brother. It, man. Oh, come here, hug it out, hug Cousin it out. Cousin Maroni, there you go, Maroni. It's okay. Hug it out. So he's never been drunk. He doesn't know. He does. You know, he's he has no control over his swinging emotions at this yeah. point. Yes, and 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 just remember, didn't we? Didn't we? We actually heard like a, a commandment or like a voice from, yeah. from the angel too, didn't we? He said something important. Well, or like mysterious. Yeah, I mean, he basically just told you when you were in the mine tunnel that uh, you know, like something like you know, uh, only the worthy are or <clears throat> can handle the churning staff and. Turn back now if you're not ready for the challenges ahead. Okay, okay. So we're going to be ready. We're going to be ready for that challenge. So I'll look into our hearts and knock on this door. And I'll give it a knock. Okay. Yeah, and even before anyone comes to the door, you can hear, like, a bunch of, like, kids, and they're, like, you know, just being loud and noisy. <clears throat> and, uh... Pretty soon, uh, a lady opens the door. She's like, you know, middle-aged lady with uh, curlers in her hair and a cigarette. And she she sees you guys and says, uh, y'all from the compound? Yes, indeed. Good evening, ma'am. Do you have a few minutes to talk about the Book of Muster? <laughs> Sorry, I grew up in Independence, Missouri. There's like... Every three weeks, someone was knocking on your door like that. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Huh. is is, is uh, I'm quite is familiar. Ira home, please. Yes, yes, I imagine is is Ira home? Is Ira Troyer still at this address, ma'am? No, uh, well, he lived here, but Ira's not here right now. He he went up to the casino. He goes there most nights and gambles all his money away. We can't even hardly pay rent. Oh, I see. May I ask the nature of your relationship? I'm the wife. I'm Sheila Troyer. Sh- Sheila Troyer. Uh, listen, um, this may be uh, this may uh, be a strange question, but I don't suppose that uh, he has a a churning stick. It might look quite normal to you. It's a it's about yay long and uh, oh. uh, probably a very fine churning stick. I wonder if that's something that you might have any knowledge of. That thing. Yeah, um, well, he took that up uh, to the casino a couple weeks ago, and uh, I haven't oh, no. seen him come back with it. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, that. but that thing, he never could get it to do nothing. It was just, uh, I told him it was just a old uh, metal rod, you know. He said it had special powers or something, but I never seen nothing. But yeah, he's just not righteous enough to wield it properly. But my but my brother Yeshua here, man, he's like gonna take it, and we gotta go to the casino, man, and get it back. I do hope he hasn't, uh, you know, placed it at stakes in some sort of a an immoral wager. That would be most inappropriate. Uh, yes, I'm quite concerned about that myself. Yeah, well, I wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me if that's exactly what he did. He's always betting things and always losing. He's a real loser. Surely, a, a sacred musterite artifact can't mean much to anyone but a musterite. So, 
Well, she could it have been worth much? I mean, it didn't look my much. Gosh. It didn't look like worth nothing, but you know, maybe he convinced somebody it was special or something. Maybe they maybe a- able to test it out or something. Yes, maybe someone knows its true worth. I say we would best get to this casino post haste. And uh, ma'am, I wonder if you'd give me directions to the casino. You don't have to actually give them to me. But yeah, you probably don't know how to get there. We'll, follow, we'll look for the flashing lights. Of course, I've been to town before. I'm not completely isolated. I had to come here and buy feed every now and then. And yeah, you know, I mean, I'm allowed to go to I'm allowed to go to Sprawl Mart and get a DVD every now and then. <laughs> I'm not completely Amish, so yeah, yeah. yeah she it's uh, she's told tells you tells you it's uh, called the Gold Mine Casino, and uh, she gives you the directions. It's only probably about. Fifteen minutes if you're driving. All right. Well, uh, thank you, thank you very much for your time. And uh, and here I'm going to take a fifty dollar bill out of my pocket and say, just please, uh, ha- let's get some some nice uh, healthy food for the young ones, please. Yeah. Oh. You know, blessings of bless your you know, heart. Blessings of uh, blessings of the mustards go with you. Yeah. She she takes it uh, and. She she turns around and says, "Shut the hell up in there! Shut up!" <laughs> and um, <laughs> oh, you're so kind. This will help. <laughs> and um, she says, "Well, now you want to look for. Uh, he still kind of wears a uh, kind of plain clothing, and he's got a beard, a, a brown colored beard with no mustache. And uh, that's how." You probably know him. Okay. All right. Well, very well. Thank you so much. And uh, God be with you. Okay, friends. Uh, brother, sister, do you think the Chud brothers will mind too much if we use their transportation to get on to the gold mine? Well, if oh, it's, surely not. If it's like a 15-minute drive, it would take like... You know, a couple of hours to walk, so I don't think we have a choice unless we can. I don't think. Does West Wales have taxis? <laughs> they probably do. Yes, uh, yes, I don't know that. Uh, you know, I'd hate to be pulled over or, uh, you know, uh, who knows what the sheriff might think of us borrowing this vehicle. But I say maybe we just get there as quick as we can and trust to the good Lord to keep us safe. Well, what if they reported it stolen? There's always that possibility, brother. There's always that possibility. Suppose we could try to go to the manager's office here or find a, a stand that uh, has a pay phone that we could perhaps call a taxi. Uh, I, I'm willing to follow uh, your wishes on that if I, both of you feel that it'd be dangerous to drive around in this van. Otherwise, I will trust in the Lord. I have no opinion, and I'm too. I can't make decisions right now. And let the Lord make. I think. I think the Lord will. Will He supports our mission? We've been sent on this mission for an angel, and He set up that whole altercation, and this is all part of His will. So we should just take the van since we have it. I, I don't disagree. All right, let's do it. Okay. Here, I'll, I'll drive. I'll drive. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't even know how to drive. That's and, true. And, and, and I know how to, like, drive a, you know, a wagon. I could probably figure it out, though. In fact, I think I should drive. But, you know. <laughs> Tell you what, when, we, when all this is over, I'll give you some lessons in the red pickup. It's probably safer to do that out in Musterton than here in West Wales. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so uh, you guys uh, get back in the van and start it up, and uh, you've got directions. You can start heading there. All right, here we go. And, uh, you know, in the passenger seat, uh, of the van now is this is like a cargo van or like a conversion van I, I i probably asked that already but i don't remember yeah i think i said it was a just a cargo van i don't know the difference but uh it it's 
it's built so they can it's like open you know you can they can carry around like caskets in it and stuff and there's nothing in there right now right right so probably there's probably like a you know a driver's seat and a passenger seat and then like nothing yeah. basically in the back yeah mm-hmm. um so you know i'm assuming actually uh, he'll he'll let cecily take passenger seat and he'll just sit in the cargo area in the back drinking more beer <laughs> okay <laughs> all right well yeah you guys uh get there uh pretty quickly and uh you see uh yeah the gold mine casino it's small but there's a lot of cars here and a lot of people coming and going from the front door and um you park uh, wherever you want to and you can start walking to the front entrance well, brother and sister it's worth keeping in mind we're going to be like Daniel in the lion's den in there you'll find yourself faced with a great deal of temptation but especially talking to you brother Moreau and I so let's just <laughs> well, and when you when you say that and you look over at him to uh, address him. Uh, you see that he's he's there's like several empty cans on the floor around him, and he's just passed out completely. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. Oh well, it looks like we've lost cousin Moroni. Well, should we wake I, him are up? Are you going to try to rouse him? Yes, we should rouse him. We should definitely rouse him. After all, Xerxes sent him on this mission too, and I believe he has an important part to play in all this before the end even if he doesn't see it yet himself, sister. So, uh, here, why don't you nuzzle him a little bit and wake him up? No. Uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, well, I'll just stand up. There you go. There's a big fella. There's a big boy. And uh, kind of open up the back of the van and kind of sit him up there on the, the back. And uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, Weird. What, what, hey, hey, what's up? What, 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 what's going on, brother? We're on a mission from God. That's what's going on. And you need to get bright, pal. Because, uh, <laughs> um, maybe we should get him some coffee. That's right. Well, we'll give him a nice cup of coffee as soon as we get in there. Okay. Mm. Okay. Well, they probably, I mean, it's a casino, right? They probably have free coffee. Well, I wouldn't know much. I'm about to learn, so. All right, bright lights, big, big city friends. You know, I've never had caffeine before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's something. Oh, actually, we might we might frown on that. Actually, you're at least devout. Well, Mormons branch do. Branch of Mormonism, so, yeah. and Mormons do. But you know what? I know some Mormons, and they like their coffee yeah. just fine. They're they're like anyone else. They wink at the minor stuff, right? So, yeah. Yes. All right. Armor of God, people. Strap on the armor of God. Here we go. <laughs> God likes strap-ons. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Brother Moroni. Brother Moroni. Oh. Cousin. I don't know I don't know why I said that or why that why would even have occurred to Moroni to say. Well, as soon as I you will. say that there's a thunderclap in the sky. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Um we have we have Miss Cecily's delicate ears here, please. Let's so, um, yeah, well... What's he mean? I don't <laughs> get it. It's best that you don't know and never find out. Yeah, she, she's too innocent to understand that. But you guys are... <laughs> unless, we do get, unless we do get married, then you'll be required to use one regular <laughs> one. We'll <laughs> that at, a, at a later date. <laughs> I don't even think Moro and I would fucking know what <laughs> the strap on is. So I, I retract <laughs> that from the record. Um... Yeah, so when you guys are walking in, uh, you see off to the side of the front entrance is a guy who uh, you guess is homeless. He's got, like, fingerless gloves on and has a, like, scruffy beard and looks the part. And he, but he stares and actually points right at you guys and says... I've got a message for y'all. I got a message for y'all. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me think. Come on, come, come on, Willie. Think. Uh, um, 
it, it's uh, Berenstein Bears, not Berenstain Bears. Don't believe the lies. No, that's not it. Uh, uh, come on, Willie. Um, uh, you got to stroke it. You got to stroke it. That's the key. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Willie. Yeah. What a weird message. Yeah. That Thank was you. a weird message. Yeah. Is he talking about the staff? What staff? Or something Perhaps. else. Perhaps. What staff? Huh? All right. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is what is with the, the gibberish? <laughs> this is your future if you continue to drink the way you have. Been. Uh, they, um, this is it's true. up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B A start. <laughs> uh, and uh, now you see a security guard come up. <clears throat> he says, "God damn it, Willie!" Been warned not to loiter around here. Call the police if you don't leave and stop harassing people. Oh, no need for that. He was just giving us a message from God. Well, We're to stroke it. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, that's okay. Uh, maybe in the uh, cabaret theater, but that's frowned upon. Uh. <laughs> oh, good to know. Good to know. Our ways are weird. We don't know your ways. Uh. But but anyway, as we continue to walk in, you know, like through the yeah you know, doors, what I was like, um, you know, brothers, perhaps he was speaking of the staff when he said to stroke it. You know, God speaks through the strangest messengers sometimes. It's true, and they say he loves fools and drunks. Yes, indeed. Oh, he must really love you right now, Moroni. <laughs> yeah, and you know, for some reason, I have this phrase in my head but I don't know where it came from or what it means it's Konami code <laughs> yeah well, well I get that but brother Yeshua certainly does not no I, I didn't figure any of your characters would uh, know the no. uh, cheat code to uh, Contra <laughs> for 30, 30 30 lives I think it was this is like ninety nine, I thought. But yeah, that's it's the same code for like Contra and like five thousand oh, okay. Konami games. Well, he said that, so now we have thirty lives <laughs> and we have nothing to fear. <laughs> Hopefully so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, as you guys are still walking in, uh, he he scampers off. Uh, but as he's leaving, he shouts, "Marshmallow fluff is peeps." It's peeps. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Some listeners might catch that one. Yeah. All right. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, so now you guys uh, enter the casino, and uh, you see a. it's a large open area. It's carpeted, and there's a bunch of uh, gaming tables in the center. Off to the sides, there's rows of slot machines. And there's like a few different like different sections, like different rooms uh, with signs. Or some of them have, have signs. Um, one of them says high stakes. Another one says the gold bar. Then one of them says cabaret theater. And then um, you see at the back there's like another door that's closed and uh, with a security guard standing in front of it um but that's pretty much it it's pretty small and um there's but still you know quite a a lot of ground to cover if you're looking for ira all right let's uh let's scan the room friends and walk about naturally and keep an eye out for a plainly dressed man with a chin beard uh, well, and Moroni, the first thing Moroni is going to do is go up to, like, find the nearest... Well, there's probably just a coffee m- machine somewhere. He's going to get <clears throat> a couple cups of coffee. Yeah, um, I think the most likely place for that would be in the uh, the gold bar. Just right off to your right, right, right when you enter. It's like the first sort of uh, section on your right. 
it's open the the doors are open it's a separate room but it you can go in there if you want and uh there is it's just a bar uh, but they have coffee that you can i don't have enough experience in casinos but i'm assuming maybe they do have free coffee uh so you can help yourself to that yeah the ones i've been to generally just have like coffee machines and soda machines and stuff and they're just like like fountain machines you just grab a cup and fill it up and it's just you know it's like 7-eleven except you don't have to pay for it as long as you're gambling yeah they probably want you amped up and ready to gamble um but it's got uh there's a bunch of like tvs on you know with sports and um but when you're when you look at the one of the tv screens uh there's a actually all of them would probably show this there's a they interrupt the sports game whatever is playing and uh there's a news report and you see a reporter that's Look, appears to be standing outside of Musterton. It's like, you know, uh, police lights flashing in the background. And he says, An outlaw biker gang known as the Pale Riders have taken over a compound in Butte County, Nevada, and are holding the residents, religious fanatics known as Muppet Wipes, as hostages. <laughs> <laughs> the bikers are demanding that fellow members Salisbury Stake Mojo Malone and several others be immediately released from Hardgate Penitentiary where they are currently serving life sentences. We understand that negotiations with the FBI are ongoing. No further information is available at this time. And it cuts back to the regularly or regular scheduled program. Mm. Salisbury mm. steak. Muppet wipes. Wait. <laughs> He got that. I don't think he got that right. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, something tells me. Mm. Well, I don't know that. Uh, I don't know that the police can help. It's. I think it's on us. But we'll let that situation develop. And meanwhile, I'll scan the the gold room here, or the gold bug, or the gold bar, gold bar, gold bar, for uh, for. Ira. Ira True. Look, yeah. look for that telltale beard. Not a lot of people with an Abe Lincoln beard hanging out in this place, I'm hoping. Yeah, uh, okay. Just, uh, yeah, make a standard D6 roll. Well, it's a very, very, very bad roll. And, uh, so, no, you- I don't. And something else okay. happens. Well, uh, oh, you're, you're really straining your eyes looking uh, for Ira and um, <clears throat> you uh, I don't know you see uh, something uh, some commercial on TV maybe comes up but it's like uh, something bad you know you don't want to see like something on oh I don't need to look at that oh my yeah oh my <laughs> there's like a I tell you it's too much too much cleavage on that woman commercial yeah, too much the shorts are just too short these days in general but my personal taste uh, a good musterite woman would clothe herself that way <coughs> so well I'm sorry I saw that and I certainly it does not appear that our our uh, friend Ira is here maybe we should check in the rest of the place well, I do hope he's not in that cabaret theater I don't like the sound of that Let's look around a little bit more since you were distracted. No, oh, I not through any my, any intention of mine. I can assure you of that, Sister Cecily. But yes, of course I'm not. Momentarily distracted, and uh, he walks out like glancing back at the TV. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> one last time. Yeah. Well, and at this point, Moroni's had a couple cups of coffee, and I think in reality, while that would just make him simultaneously drunk and uh, amped, I'm gonna. Knock off with the uh, stupid drunken act. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe you sobered up a little. Sobered up, yeah, yeah. Um, so Although, yeah, my experience is that coffee just makes a wide awake drunk. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. 
But uh, in movies and TV shows, they usually uh, oh yeah, it works all. like a charm. Yeah, yeah, yeah works great on TV. Mm. So yeah, I will just like yeah. I will remove the uh, the disadvantage for your roles, and you can. So you guys are you going back into the main area? Okay, and you can. Yeah, if we're certain he's not here, yeah. Yeah. You can look here, or you can look uh, in that theater, or, or or there was a high stakes place as well, and then there's that back door that was guarded. Well, brother and sister, since I've managed to defile my body and become such a foul sinner already, uh, I, I volunteer to visit the cabaret. Uh, I cannot further befoul myself uh, in the name in the, in the in the eyes of the Lord. Why I'm don't you... pretty sure you can. <laughs> Why don't you go have a quick peek in there uh, while we scan this room? I have this weird feeling that our friend uh, Mr. Troyer may have become an inveterate gambler, and his wife led me to believe that. And if he's truly gambled away. The holy turning stick. I'm afraid he might be in the high stakes room. But I agree we should check out everywhere. So, I agree, Brother Moroni. Why don't you take one for the team and go withstand, you know, risk polluting yourself in the cabaret theater. So I'll go off and do that. Okay. He's not coming back. I say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's got like a... Uh Double doors, they're closed. Um, when you walk in, you see like a small theater uh, with a stage, and you see like a guy on there on stage with a microphone, and he says, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for pudding. And then um, this, <laughs> this lady, youngish, like, uh, 20 something uh, lady with dark hair comes in um, she's wearing like pasties kind of like burlesque you know look and uh, she starts dancing and after a minute she starts to like pour these uh, vanilla pudding cups onto herself and um, that's what you see um, you can either I mean, you can look around the the crowd, I guess, to see if Ira is, is seated, if you want. Yeah, I will uh, ignore, or to the best of my ability, uh, attempt to ignore what's going on on the stage and, and, and look over the audience. Okay, yeah, it would just be a D6 roll. Well, that's not going to work because I got a three. Okay, yeah. Um, well, you don't see him. Doesn't appear to be anyone that matches the description of Ira in here. And um, meanwhile, outside in the main area, uh, are you both looking? Well, you said you wanted to go like to the high stakes room. Well, we'll we were just going to scan this room while. Okay. Brother Morona peeked in there. Then we can maybe all go to the high stakes room together if he's not out here. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can both make rolls. Oh my god, I rolled a one again. <laughs> uh, we get one <laughs> dice unless we have a something that would give reason. you like a modifier or something. I have a focused mind. Oh yeah, I think that would definitely help give you another d6. God, I should have given myself a D6, too. I'm perceptive, but we'll, oh. we'll let that go. I forgot I was per- so perceptive. Oh, yeah. I got... Oh, yeah. Um, um, yeah, what did you roll? I rolled a two, so yes, but... Okay. Yeah, so... <laughs> uh, Yeshua, uh, you can't help... You keep seeing things you don't want to see. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you I saw. Know. Like a, you look, you're scanning the room, and you, you see like, uh, some 
bad behavior from uh, some some women. And oh my! They're getting it's freaky. Really a land of the really land of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah here. Oh my! Yeah, you just, see anything, Sister says. This lady's got like a. You can see her her thong coming up, and she's like grinding against another guy. Um, oh my! And uh, but. Uh, Cecily, you, what did you get again? I got a two. Okay. So yes, but yeah, you you do see somebody matching the description of uh, Ira, um, but you also uh, you kind of uh, knock into somebody. And knock their drink and, and spill it on them, and it's like a oh, it's a, a old lady sort of uh, middle aged lady. I'm so sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean to bump into you. I I wasn't paying attention to where I was walking. I'm so sorry. Yeah, get out of here. Yeah, I'm going to the slots. Get out of my way. Oh, okay. Have a nice day. Yeah, whatever. And, uh... But, yeah, you guys do... You can point out uh, this guy you see. He's kind of sitting at this table. And, uh... Not at, like, a gaming table. He's just, um... Sitting by himself kind of looking bored actually um and uh he's got yeah he matches the description you can go up to him if you want well let's go up to him Mm -hmm. alright yeah you 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 go up to him um he doesn't seem to react to you as you walk up to him Ira, is that you? Uh, no. My name is Ahmed. I don't know who this Ira is. Hmm. Uh, I don't suppose you've seen anyone else around with a, a long, luxurious beard like yours? Hmm. Oh, my, uh, friend, uh, but he is, a uh, Dagestan... He is Dagestani like me. Um, we are from Dagestan, Russia. Um, and I am here to uh, support my friend who is uh, fighting in an uh, underground fighting tournament. Oh, my. Oh. Yeah, the, I, don't, I just... That sounds dangerous. Yeah, he's the good at fighter, though. Uh, we just uh, are waiting around. Uh, I'm waiting because I don't... I don't drink or gamble. It is harem, because we we are Muslim. Well, we're all people of the book, brother. Uh, yes, we also avoid these vices and stay steadfast to our Lord. And we do share the Old Testament in common. And, uh, yes, it's good. Uh, yes, uh, he he fight. Uh, I don't like that he fight, but he's good at it, and... Uh, I just waiting around. The, the fighting and tournament is uh, underneath the casino. It mm. is. Um, it has not started yet, but uh, it uh, it happening going later tonight. And uh, but uh, you, I don't know. I should not be telling you because it's a secret. Well, then say no more. Say no more, brother. Thank you very much. And, uh, well. Maybe we should uh, go get our friend. We'll go get Moroni and maybe head into the high stakes room. Yes, I think that's a wonderful idea. Yep, yeah, uh, the uh, high stakes room is uh, right off to your right again. Um, and uh, you Whoa, yeah. g- go in there. 
And it's yeah, we'll go pull Moroni out of the, the room of pudding sin. Well, after he 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 would have just yeah. I mean he spent some time looking around for Ira, yeah. but when he didn't find him, he just okay. would come out anyway, and then say something to the effect of, y- "You won't believe what they're doing with pudding in there." I don't think I want to know what they're doing with pudding in there. I can't. They're even not imagine. eating it. Isn't <laughs> that what you're supposed well, to do? Well, I with? think they might be eating it eventually, but not with spoons. Oh. <laughs> hmm. That doesn't sound like something I should know about or see. I agree. Oh, my, me either. Let's go into the high stakes room, friends. Yeah. Yeah, you guys all go in there. And um, you can all roll to see if you see Ira. Oh, well, this time I get the exact opposite of a one, which is a six. And that's I also got a yeah. six. So, yes, oh. we do. And I don't even need to roll. Um, okay. Yes, yes and. Yeah, well. Yes, you don't see him in there, but you're you're very confident this time. You know, you trust your eyes, and you definitely know that uh, wherever Ira is, he's not in here. Well, then, friends, I have a terrible conclusion I must draw. That perhaps our friend Ira is downstairs where there's this illegal underground fighting tournament and how we'd get an invite to a secret tournament I don't know yeah yeah that's a very good question and mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna while we're thinking about it <clears throat> I'm gonna kind of sidle closer to the door where the pudding show is <laughs> going on <laughs> And just peek in there real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, you see a whole lot of, of pudding. And uh, this woman, she's like, now she's like no longer like pouring it on herself, but she's like on the stage floor, just kind of like flopping around in the pudding. <laughs> 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 and the people just love it, though. Okay, my um, my eyes are gonna get real big, and I'm just gonna back back out of the room and close the door. <laughs> I guess, uh, <laughs> I guess maybe we should go speak to the security guard over by that last door, and maybe if we are very nice, we could somehow get ourselves down to where they're having this fighting tournament and see if uh, Ira's down there. Yes, we could check into that. Perhaps even one of us could could pose as a fighter. If it comes to that. Now, honestly, the second you said underground fighting tournament, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I think I might see where this is going. <laughs> but, because um, after all, let's not forget, we are masters of Gavora, but Gavora is not to be employed for purposes of sport. And again, there is a greater good here. We are on a mission from God yeah. after all. So perhaps we should go speak to this security guard. All right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you can walk up to him. He doesn't say anything. Greetings. We've been told there may be some special activity downstairs. And we would very much like an invite. How would one go about that? You need the password. Ah. The password. The password. What did we do with that password? <laughs> I'm trying to think of everything. Up, down, up, down, left, right, left. <laughs> you know, I start doing that. Co- no. Uh, what else <laughs> did that guy say? I'm trying to think of some, some stuff that that drunk said to us. Maybe he pulled it Pudding? That is incorrect. He yelled some like, random He was one. yelling about Baron Stain Bears, and he was yelling yeah. about the Konami he, Code, and he told us to stroke he, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops. He said you got to stroke it. Um, yeah. But. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. 
Um, wait, what was written on the matchbook that we found? Um, the that oh. was um, amplify your battle cry. No, I don't think that's it. <laughs> but uh, I got more of advice for us. <laughs> but <clears throat> password. Yeah, and that player me was tempted to try something like Stroker's Wild, because <laughs> it's a casino. But uh, like Stroker has nothing to do with this. He's like, oh, so. you know Stroker. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and it, uh, it's possible that you have not been given the uh, <clears throat> the password. The password. Yeah. <clears throat> well, um, let's just say for the sake of argument that one did not have a password, but possibly one had a special talent that might make them an interesting part of the festivities there. I'm not supposed to let you in without the password. Well, nothing says you can't tell us the password, and then we can tell you back. The honor would be satisfied in that case. I think you guys... I think you'd have to make like a... I'm sure You'd have to get like a six or something. You, you know what? I I am very empathetic. Oh, and you though. you do have yeah. foo points. Uh, it's true. But that I just gives points. you a re-roll, or you can well, add a die as well before you roll. Well, I am I have foo points and I'm empathetic. I can relate to people. I'm good at talking to people. I'll give them that look like I really care because I do. My brother, just a quick whisper of the password. That's all we need to do. And, uh, unfortunately, well, I got a three on that, but if I'm empathetic, do I get to roll two of them? If I can uh, trigger my little mind thing, or how's that work? Yeah, if you, I don't know if that was, was that an actual thing on your character sheet? or just? No, I just don't know what the point of having those is, if not for... Well, it is. Uh, yeah. yeah, it gives you, uh, <clears throat> I didn't know if that was like an official one that you'd written down or you're just saying but I think it's you know I think it still would apply if because you are you do seem to be empathetic regardless of yeah I mean it is my official mind oh, okay. abilities empathy but uh, uh, I rolled the exact same thing twice which is in both cases a no go but I'm going to spend a foo point okay much as I hate to because I have this feeling I'm going to need him soon but uh I'll spend it face. But yes! Well, it's four. It's not six, but it's a, it's definitely a complete success. Still, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, he says, uh, <sighs> you didn't hear it from me. Oh, no. All right. And just in case someone asked you later how you got down there. I'll tell you the password. It's Black Dragon. Black Dragon. Got it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, brother. And uh, I reach into my hip pocket and pull out one of the little tiny books of muster. I'd like you to have this to read and uh, now, just, think about. Just get out of here. Just <laughs> He opens the door and, and ushers you all in. And that's how you make the Gentiles get rid of your friends, right? There. <laughs> yeah, right. he didn't want to hear any of that. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, when you go inside this door, you come into this just little room, almost like a closet, but it's like a bare room, but the only thing that's in it is a um, an elevator, but it's like a mining elevator. It's like a cage door elevator. And... Uh, mm-hmm. And it's, you can open it, and it's like a, there's a shaft, you know, it goes up and down the shaft, and uh, you see two little, a red button for up and a red button for down, and you can't go up, you're already at the top of this mm-hmm. shaft. So the only choice is to hit the down button and go down, if that's where you're going. I think that's where we're going. Hopefully not eternally, but just for right now. All right. Remember, mission from God, friends. All right. All right. Yeah, you hit the the button. Mm-hmm. Okay, and you uh, start slowly descending down. Um, yeah, so you like pass down through the uh, 
like foundation or whatever, and then you can you s- slowly it empties. Like you can see this natural cavern around you through the cage as you you know keep going down, and uh, you can see this appears to be yeah a cave with. Like, it's all lit up, but with, like, bright, like, halogen lights. There's a big cage in the center, um, and it appears to be a dodecagon, 12-sided cage in the center. (laughs) And uh, you see a bunch of people. There's no one in the cage fighting or anything, but there's a bunch of benches people are sitting on, and a bunch of people just wandering around and uh, you see well you get to the bottom and the open the cage but the right when you open the cage the uh, first thing you see you're pretty sure I'm not even gonna make your rule as you you see Ira um, he's just kind of caught off guard um, you just know in your heart that that's Ira because especially when he sees you, he immediately starts to, like, try to walk away from you guys. Like, fast walk away. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's fast walk faster than he's fast walking. Kinda, <laughs> yeah. I'll put okay. a, yep. a gentle, not too aggressive, gentle but firm hand on his shoulder if I can catch up to him. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely catch up to him. And he says... Oh. You've come for me, haven't you? We've come for the churn. Yes, we just need the churning stick, Ira. No one's trying to bring you back into a life you don't want. But taking that churning stick, that hurt a lot of people. And we're going to need it back. Listen, I'm assuming you're from Musterton. I have That's to, right. I have to tell you something. You're not going to like it. I, unfortunately... Don't have the churning staff anymore. I lost it in a bad gambling bet, bad hand of poker. But, but you can get it back. There's a way. You see. Oh, really? You see, there's a this fighting tournament here. It's called the Kumite, and it's uh, it's illegal full contact fighting tournament and, and they're it's it's put on by the black dragon fighting society it's held every five years in a different location around the world and this year there's they're short a contestant and and they're offering that churning staff as as part of the the prize you you, you can one of you whoever is the the strongest fighter I'm assuming you guys no Gavora if you're Musterites. Of course we do. And yes, we do. And one of you may enter the, the tournament. You, you have a, a good chance of winning. You can get $5,000 plus the churning staff. That's the only way to get it back. You, mm-hmm. you just have to sign up to fight in this, in the Kumite. Well, Brother Yeshua, I don't, I don't know about this. I'm not much of a fighter myself. I... I I don't know. Would you? Would you? Would you think you should do it, or maybe? Well, first of all, sure, surely we shouldn't put Sister Cecily in that position. I am an excellent fighter. It would certainly be the least expected stratagem, and don't discount yourself. I've seen you. I saw you break a brick once, man, with only one knuckle. So don't discount your ability. I wish there's somebody we could all share this risk together. But if things go terribly wrong, we may all end up fighting our way out of here anyway. I am uh, very loath to let Cecily come to harm, however, even though I believe in her ability. Friends, I believe that we should let God choose. And I'm going to take some matches out of this matchbook, and I'm going to break one off so they'll be shorter than the other. And perhaps we will let God choose which one of us will go into Mm. the ring. And maybe I'll just roll a d6 here, you know, and like one to two will be me, and three to four will be 
Ryan and five or six will be Lynn. We'll see who. Yeah, if you all drew the short, the short. Uh, if you're all okay with possibly being picked to to fight. Yeah, I mean, I could see like story wise, I'd probably go in there and fight, but I don't want to hog the camera for that long, you know. So we're gonna let God decide. This is what this is how lots were invented in old times, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Plus, uh, okay, so here we go. We're going to draw straws and. Well, crap. Looks like it's going to be a number two. I think God has chosen me. Uh, well, however, you, friends. You are the biggest. Um, uh, there's some scary fighters in here. Well, I'm. I think you'd I'm, be I'm, the strongest. Well, perhaps, perhaps not. But I hate to hate to leave my friends here to spectate. But I'll go speak to the man about uh, about entering. Uh, who would I speak to about that? Yeah, so he he points you uh, in the direction of there's like a desk with two Asian men sitting behind the desk um, that's kind of sitting in front of the dodecagon, and um, you can uh, yeah he says just go up and speak to them tell them you want to. Enter the tournament. I will do so. All right, friends. Here we go. Yeah. Come with me for moral support. I'll, I'll ask him now. Yeah. Uh, you guys... So, yeah, if you guys <clears throat> all walk towards uh, the desk, uh, you see there's actually a few people in line in front of the desk. And um, <clears throat> you actually see that uh, there's... There's three kids um, in line to sign up for oh the Kumite. <laughs> oh, no. And, uh, you see one kid, uh, <clears throat> he's like a tubby ginger kid with a red afro, and he's wearing like a red bandana <laughs> around his forehead. And you see a sk- skinny kid um, with uh, red ski goggles on and like a <laughs> weird like spandex and then um you see another kid uh just wearing a full on ninja costume and uh but the, the one of the guys behind the desk he says get out of here you kids how did you even get in here to begin with get out of here and the the uh <clears throat> the ginger kid says this tournament couldn't even handle my tai chi anyway and, and the other, the nerdy kid says, "Yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to accidentally end up killing anyone, so it's probably for the best." And the other kid says, "Nothing, because he's a ninja." And uh, they're kind of escorted away. Oh, and you can go I, up to know, the desk now. I think those kids might have been superheroes. They had something about them, or fearless vampire hunters. I don't know. One of the two. All right. Uh, excuse me, uh, gentlemen. Uh, I was told that the Black Dragon you know, Fighting Club could use a participant this evening, one more. And uh, now that these children are out of the way, I believe I'm your guy. In fact, God has decreed that I join your fighting contest. Hmm. Who is your sensei? My sensei is Uriah King. Have you ever heard of him? Ah, oh, yes, uh... Sensei Uriah is well respected in the martial art community. Well, guy taught me everything he knows. In okay. fact, let me not be let me not be arrogant. I, I hope that I will do him proud, and I hope that I have learned what he has taught me. But I will, in fact, amplify my battle cry. You can be sure of that. I don't know what that means, but we accept you into the Kumite, and I would like to ask that your companions, maybe they would like to be alternates, just in case that if you were to win either any of the uh, fights that you fight in, uh, but are unable to continue to the next fight, they would take your place. That sounds most reasonable. I approve of that strategy. And I believe I won't. I won't speak for you, friends. What do you think, brother, sister? 
Absolutely. I think that's perfectly reasonable. Very well. I will escort you all backstage. Well, it is up to you if your companion wants to go with you backstage. Oh, yes. I will need their moral support, yes. Okay. The tournament will... uh, We'll start shortly, but I will take you to your dressing room, give you instructions, and, uh, and we will go from there, tell you who your opponent is. Very well. <laughs> yeah, so he leads you to a backstage area. You find, uh, yeah, there's a dressing room, and inside the dressing room... There's like a locker. There's like a TV mounted in the corner of the like ceiling area um, that just shows footage of the inside of the dodecagon. And um, and there's like a table with like some stuff laid out on it. I was gonna let you decide um, if you want to wear like uh, they have. Like a gi, you know, like a karate style robe, you know, um, but mm-hmm. it's black with like a red belt. If you want to mm-hmm. wear that, but there's also this like trunks. You can go like shirtless with <laughs> wearing like shorts, you know, if you want. Mm-hmm. So well, you. I'm I'm six five and I'm a little heavy, but if the if the gi is uh will fit me, I think that that's more my style. Yeah, it's they uh, they. They give you like a, a heavyweight, uh, yeah, gi. And yeah, I'll, t- I'll wear that. A little more modest. A little more modesty would be. Uh, Brother Moroni I can wear the trunks if it comes to that. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'll. Uh, and it gives I'll you that on and- a key to the locker, uh, just in case you have <clears throat> possessions you want to keep in there. I'll put some chalk on my hands. Chalk up. And uh, before we. And I do want to just see, like, want to roll randomly to see who your opponent is. Um, okay. All right. So there's eight fighters, and uh, I'm going to... Oh, fuck. i got to get my D8 real quick. Wasn't prepared. <laughs> That's great. I love that you've got eight guys lined up to fight. Yeah. Who will I fight? Will the Lord send as my adversary? Okay. Okay. Well, uh, your first, the first fight will be against someone named uh, Tyrone Chopsaki Houston, and they give you like a little like picture of him, uh, you know, profile. Uh, it's like a, he's kind of a lanky black guy with an afro, like a. He's some guy that's probably watched too many uh, kung fu movies. Um, and that is your first opponent. But we'll just in there as you're preparing. And we'll yeah, figure we'll out there. who's fighting who and all that. I think it. this isn't necessarily like the best system for... Uh, fighting tournament, but I think it should be pretty quick. So, yeah. Well, uh, Tyrone Chop Saki Houston, just better watch out for Yeshua Hammer of God Dandy. Okay, yeah. I was going to ask you if you wanted to go by a name. Nice. I just reread the Apocrypha and the Book of Maccabees, and that's going to be my name. All right, well, yeah, we'll have to. Uh, Wait until next episode to find out what happens with the the Kumite. All right. Hey, everybody. If you like our podcast, don't forget to leave us a good rating and or review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Spotify, or wherever you're able. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at Goonies underscore world. And check out our website at GooniesWorldPodcast.com. Email us at GooniesWorldPodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening.